Hey people, it's Kelly of Print Pray Slay, and I'm here with another episode of Cookies in Christ. Um, again, hopefully you watched the previous video in which you know that there is a change to the flow of Cookies in Christ, um, in which I'm going to talk to you as the original version of Cookies in Christ, which was me sharing my Bible with a friend. So that is what I'm doing. So you'll see top-down table view of my study Bible, my chronological study Bible to be exact, and my highlights, my raw notes, and my hands. <laughs> All right, so these videos are meant to be more condensed, more concise than my previous videos of Cookies in Christ, which were like hour long segments of me and Morgan or me and a guest going um, back and forth on our study notes. Um, and I really, really appreciate Brenda and Debbie and Morgan um, coming on there with me. Um, they, they, they were awesome um, with their studies. And so I really, really am going to miss that part. But I really hope that in the comments, you guys can give me those same feels on like what happened when you studied the Bible. What what did you learn in this particular se um, segment? So for right now, it is chapter 16 chapter i mean well yeah number 16 so 16 is this page this page all right we're gonna stop here all right let's see because the feel is for it to be 15 minutes um if it's way less then i'll continue on and hopefully it doesn't go i've never seen like a whole chapter take more than 15 minutes so let's dive into it so that does not happen to us <laughs> okay so if i can do like 16 okay so 16 actually stops here starts here all right and this is when people are going to rebel against moses yet again all right this is not new we're not new to this this is just something that just keeps happening to my man moses all right so there are these three gentlemen um um let's let's get their names right cora um dathan and Abir abiram but that, I'm, I'm trying not to be disrespectful um, but so that is what's going on. So you got those guys. Okay. But usually most, most of it is coming from, uh, Cora or Cora, um, in which they incite a rebellion against Moses. That's simply all I highlighted at this particular point. Um, but to give you some insight on who Cora is, he is already a big deal. Like he's already been sanctioned to have, you know, certain abilities and things going on in the camp of the israelites he's already like a leader all right so my note here is next to the numbers 16 1 through 3 in which him and his associates really looked at the advantages of priesthood um which they're jealous of moses and aaron mainly aaron because aaron is the um highest priest so my note here is to seek God first. If you feel like you want to have more influence and power, don't just take it upon yourself to see what somebody else has and want to take it or want it. First of all, you don't know what they went through in order to get to where they are, okay? And you may not even know the full scope of duties that go along with what they are doing, all right? You might see the glam or whatever the case may be. If we take that into real situations now, you may want to be your supervisor, but you have no idea all the things that they had to do in order to get there. Or you may not know all the things that they have to do in order to stay there and how to be good at that position. All right. Not that you don't deserve to have that title or that you shouldn't aspire to be greater than where you are now. But starting off with seeking God's guidance on it, which really involves you praying about it and really feeling your way through understanding what it takes to get there first. Don't just go at the person when what you really want is the position or what you really want is to be married. Like you don't start attacking all wives. You just be like, okay, so maybe I should start talking to wives to see like, you know, you know, what is the feel for being a wife? What is some characteristics of a wife that you feel are important? Maybe I need to deep, dig deep to see, like, do I already have those qualities? Am I, am I, you know, available to suitors possibly? Like those type of things. Don't just, you know, stop being mad at people that have children because you want children. You try to see what is needed in order to be a good parent. Start putting yourself in certain groups. Start praying about it. Start researching about it. Never really go and attack that person that is where you want to be. All right? And don't attach yourself with ill will either. Like, you know, we, we could be a little slick and sly. So let's not do any of those things. We are going to learn a lesson, okay, from Korah, all right, and, and his peoples. 
also known as his followers. Think about it. All right, so on the flip page, uh, my highlights here says, like, tomorrow morning, the Lord will show. Sorry about that. <laughs> tomorrow morning, the Lord will show us um, who belongs to him, who is holy. So they're about to set a whole stage for how God is going to reveal the fact that he put Aaron there, and that is where Aaron needs to stay. And here down here in my study notes, yeah, I highlighted that we often desire special qualities God has given to others. Um, and we talk about how, well, it talks about how um, Cora already had significance, like I told you before, and his ambition caused him to lose everything. We about to dive into what everything really is. So um, this is when it says like he already had like a special ministry and um, the Lord is the one um, you and your followers are really revolting against, like letting them know the severity of what he is asking. Like you're not just mad at Aaron. Like if you mad at Aaron in the way that you're mad at him, then you really, really low key are mad at God because this is God's decision. Like it's not like Aaron, um, you know, campaigned <laughs> for the situation or for this position. Um, so, um, I, I, my note right here, this says that your beef is with God, but be humble and appreciate what you already have. All right. And here it says he is going back with going back and forth with Aaron and going back and forth with Moses. This is Korah talking about how, again, they have like this. I put this, this um, delusional like they were in slavery. And here they're saying, isn't it, it isn't enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, milk and honey. Like, where, did we read the same thing back in Exodus? Like it wasn't milk and honey. It was slavery. And so they don't they don't even have a good understanding of like their past like they've been out of it so far like you didn't forgot that you came from the ghetto or you forgot that you came from a broken home and now that you have a little taste of, of freedom and prestige and ability you want to go even further which to depending on your efforts towards that can look like ambition or it can look like greed Okay, in this situation, it's, it's just straight greed. Okay, that's what my man is going through is just greedy, it's especially the way that he's handling it. It'd be different, again, if he prayed about it and was like, I really want to understand how Aaron is high priest and and so that I can understand why I'm not in that position. Because it's him, it's Aaron and all his sons. So you're not even in the lineage to get there, but you are already chosen for, for the lane that you are supposed to be in. Like work your lane the best that you can until you are fit to 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 cross over to another lane. Don't just be merging in other people's lanes. So this right here is like they could have. Oh, so this is my note right here. So they could have been in the promised land. Like they already went there. Like if you remember the notes from fourteen, they was already about to go into the promised land. And like I think ten dudes were sent to like scope out the land. They saw all these giants and stuff in in Canaan, and they was like, oh nah, like we ain't ready like let's 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 just not let's just go against this the lord the lord was wrong we ain't supposed to be here and so they didn't go they didn't do what they were supposed to do in order to enter the place that god had for them again you think you all bad and want to go and be and have what somebody else has and then they say oh you know she you know went and got her doctor degree or oh, anybody trying to go to school for that well that's what she did that was what was required okay <laughs> If you're not willing to do that, how are you going to have the thing that she has? Oh, I just love the way that she draws. You know she's been drawing since she was two, right? Wow. Well, I ain't, I ain't do that. Well, well, how you expect to have what she has if you haven't gone through what she gone through? And I know everybody's path is different, but I'm just telling you, if you're not willing to withstand some of the, the storms and stuff that somebody has gone through for these people, if you're not willing to just listen to God and go to the places that... So how are you going to be the high priest and we already know that you can't, you can't follow instructions? <laughs> so and even Aaron is having his own struggle with that. So and again we already talked about it and you going to see more about how Aaron just who poor Aaron. But yeah, they could have had what they wanted which is milk and honey. They could have been there right then right there right now at that time, but they decided otherwise. And instead of not blaming themselves but instead of reflecting on themselves, they decide to take that to God and go against Aaron and Moses. Once again, so Moses is angry. Like usually Moses intercedes. Like we see this over and over. The people messed up. Moses intercedes. The people did this. Moses pleaded to God. This time Moses was like, 
don't accept their grain offerings. <laughs> I was like, really? Wow. Like Moses is really, he's really, really mad. Right. And, and rightfully so it's okay to get mad. It's just, what do you do with that anger? Okay. So I never want you to leave being like, Ooh, I was mad at somebody. I got to go and do this, that, and the third. But if you thought some stuff, yeah. Well, you did some stuff. Definitely, yeah. So Moses says to Karad, you and your followers, be careful who you be following, must come here tomorrow and present yourself before the Lord. So he stirred up the whole community. This is Karad. Against Moses and Aaron. And they gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Okay. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, get away from all these people because I'm about to destroy them. I'm about to do that thing that I'm very capable of doing. But Moses and Aaron, once again, fell on their face I wrote compassion right here um, and pleaded with God. You are God who gives breath to all creatures. Okay. And that's what they're saying. Like they're saying God's words back to God. Okay. So, so that God can have compassion and, and have mercy and grace on these people. Um, so it says, you must be angry with all these people when only one man sinned. So the Lord says to Moses, then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, um, the Than, and it's not e, e, Ebram, okay? That's God sending a warning, okay? It's kind of like, what's that one? Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, when he was like, I'm about to go burn all this up. Don't look back, tell your people, all right? He said, tell all the people. Basically, it's going to be on you, your own actions. It's not like you was in a vicinity and God didn't give you warning. God told Moses, tell all the people, get away from them. If you don't believe in them, get away from them. I'm about to shut her down. All right, so Moses told the people. Um, he got up, rushed to the tents and elders and everything, told everybody, get away from the tents of the wicked men. And Moses said, this is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all the things that I have done. All right. So he, he's not working on his own. Like I can't do what God is, is doing. So just so you know, not that you ain't already had 50, 11 miracles, <laughs> you know, you got the cloud, you got the fire, you got the part of the Red Sea, you got the plagues, you got all of this stuff that already happened. You got the manna, but Hey, you, you, you know that I'm not doing this by myself. Okay. You know, my staff is doing a lot of stuff, but a whole bunch of stuff is going on to let you know that God is with this man, but you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord because the earth is going to open up and swallow them in. All right. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Right. That's this, that's impossible for one man. So that is exactly what happened before he even finished speaking. The earth opened up. All right. So that was a God thing. I just wrote a note that I never seen this before in the Bible. Like I never seen like, the earth move in that way. You definitely, like I said, you've seen the splitting of the Red Sea and all of that, but that's like different. Like imagine earthquake situation type of thing. Um, I'm assuming that happened, or it could have been as chaotic as a big hole just out of nowhere. And then boom, like they went to their graves alive. Okay. So the earth closed open on them and they vanished from all the people. Then fire blazed from uh, forth from the Lord and burned up like 250 men who um, were offering incense. The people who ain't listen. All right. Um, but the Lord used that situation and um, took the incense um, burners um, of the men who ascend and um, they made like this situation like they hammered them into metal, thin metal sheets and laid them over the offer, over the altar. To kind of let them know, like, that's another depiction of how God can take, like, sinful situation and still show his glory. Like, I'm still in charge of the situation. Um, like, a, that's like a physical being able to see it. Like, all the stuff that y'all was doing, I'm going to take that, I'm going to burn it down, and I'm going to lay it on the, altar, on the altar. All right? And let them serve as a warning to the people of Israel. All right? Um, so, and, and I feel like this can be... This is something that we've seen before. Like, if, and this might be really, really, really off, but it just, this is the one that came to my head. Like, I don't know if y'all ever, like, killed a fly. Like, I don't go out and seek to hurt any animal or anything like that, but if a fly comes in my house, I really don't like flies. I even have an electric fly swatter, y'all. 
And I've definitely heard other people like say, like, tell your friends, like, I'm gonna put the dead fly right here just so the other fly just know this ain't the place to be. Like, you're just gonna put them like right outside the door or right at the windowsill, and he's gonna be there for a little while so that with all of them kind of be like, dang, look what happened to Johnny. So, serve as a warning of the situation. So, we are aware that this is how some of us even are. Even with our children, it's like, hey, I told y'all not to do this. This is what I'm gonna put in place so that y'all can see that this is the warning. Okay, of not going down anywhere or not going down this path, not doing what I told you not to do. All right, so that is not uncommon, but I think it's amazing that God used what somebody was trying to intend for the will against him um, to serve for him. Amazing, and he does that quite often. All right, um, I said recycle for God's plans. That's what I put in that note right there. All right, let me see. Does 16 go over? Okay, it does go over here. All right, let's see. All right, when God asks to make a fundamental choice between siding with wicked people or siding with him, we should not hesitate but commit ourselves to be 100% on the Lord's side. Again, if anybody hesitated at this point, they were short. When he said, stay away from the men, you, I hopefully they heeded to that. And I do have a note here about how incense symbolizes continuous prayer. All right. I thought that was really, really neat because I never knew that. Okay. So the incense that they were burning um, had a symbol towards them, towards it. All right. Um, you won't, you're not going to believe. No, you probably will believe this. So the men, <laughs> so even after this happening, you know, the whole earth opening up and everything like that, people the next morning still was like, Aaron and Moses did it. Okay. Like y'all killed the Lord's people. All right. So Moses came and stood in front of the tabernacle and said, and, and the Lord said to Moses, get away from all these people so I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron, once again, fell down on their face to the ground and, and quickly took incense and burned it and, and, and tried to, you know, carry out all of the, the stuff among the people to purify them and make it right with the Lord. And the, the Lord had already started a plague. All right. But because of their quick action of Moses and Aaron, um, the plague kind of subsided. It kind of like went away um, by God's grace. So um, Aaron and uh, Moses, like, no, was it Aaron? Hold on. The plague had already begun to strike down the people, but Aaron, okay, Aaron burned incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. I highlighted he stood between the dead and the living and the plague stopped because that is like so similar to a whole Jesus vibe, right? Okay, but over 14,000 people died from that plague. In addition to everything that happened with uh, Karah and his crew and his followers, his family, all of those folks, they passed away as well. Um, so it's... It's important to understand who you are following. That was one of my key points. If you don't know, I do post my studies on um, Instagram in a very, very concise, like a story. It's a story. So it's probably like 20 seconds, but I have my written like blurb. So if you wanted to read those, they're on Instagram and YouTube, to be honest. So um, you can go there and see my stories um, to see my quick snapshot of my morning Bible study. Um and one of my key notes for this particular chapter was like watching who you follow. Like they just followed this man and paid for it with their lives. That was a lot of people that kind of just, you know, perish um, without good cause. And so I wanted to make a note of that. Um, it wasn't necessary. So that can be your takeaway as well. Like, who am I following? Not necessarily just on social media, just because it's called followers, but like, like really in life, who am I mimicking? Who am I um, getting certain ideas from? Like, this wasn't an issue with me before they brought an issue to me. So you're sitting there and you're like, oh, you know, I really, really like my Uncle John. Uncle John is cool. And then your cousin comes in and was like, I can't stand him because he does this, that, that, and the other. And then you went from loving Uncle John to now you hate Uncle John too. Watch the people and listen and try to use discernment to understand the people around you and how they can affect you, your point of view and how you see the world and how you go about life and how you attach yourself to them really can deter you from the, the vision and the, the, the values and the 
places that God wants you to go. So take it serious, the people, the company that you keep. All right. Um, but above all of that, know that what God has for you is for you. Okay. And if you want more, you want better, first humble yourself to appreciate where you are because you yourself know how it can get worse or has gotten worse or was worse in the past and it can get right back there so one be humble be appreciative and then go to god to seek for your increase not just trying to take it okay so went a little over but i hope that you guys appreciated this bible study again this is something that's really for my patrons and they get it way earlier than everybody else so if you would like to join my patreon the link is down in the description below um but also i would love to hear back from you guys on what you you know what happened when you read number 16 um so that i can get a feel for you know what's going on in everybody else's head and hearts all right i hope you guys enjoyed the study all right, bye-bye.